We're out here on uh, site. Uh, we just started framing this the, uh, house on uh, Lake Minnetonka. You can see Lake Minnetonka in our backdrop. Uh, fall framing, it's getting a little colder. Previously, we were out uh, looking at the lumber package that got delivered here, where we looked at the sill seal, we looked at treated lumber, we looked at the uh, difference between a two by four and a two by six. So now we're out on site and I have Kevin here, who's our uh, lead framer. And I just wanted to you know, talk a little bit about what the different pieces of uh, those materials do and, and how they uh, are brought into the house and framed up. And first place that we're gonna start is this little foam, this blue foam right here, it's called the sill seal. Um, I got Kevin here just gonna tell us a little bit about why he puts that down before we actually put the uh, treated plate down. Yeah, the sill seal is just a roll, comes out, uh, we lay it down over the top of the foundation before we put the wall on. Uh, what that does is it gives us a barrier preventing both moisture and air from coming through it. Compacts, forms nicely along any gaps and stuff in the green plate and Is it like an insulation piece it then is. too? Yes, it's definitely part of the insulation and it helps with the, the green treated lumber. It helps prevent the moisture from the concrete from wicking up. Oh, from wicking and, up, okay. Absorbing into that, that green plate over the years, over time. So why do we use the green tree to, you know, I, on the lumber package that was here, we had the green treat, and then we got our two by six, uh, uh, more of the uh, white right. pine uh, framing material. Why do we use <coughs> the uh, green treated, and why is that bolted down uh, on the uh, concrete here? The green plate is, that's that's the base of everything that, that goes down. So it's a pressure treated lumber, it's injected with chemicals that prevent rot. Okay, um, so if this, gets, if this gets water on it, like right now we have water, just right. from the uh, rain yesterday. Yep, that's okay. And that's okay on the green. That's treated. okay. Yes. Yep. That's a, a, what it's made for. Now it's not meant for below grade. It's not meant to be buried in the dirt or anything like that. But it's made for on top of concrete and exposure to the elements, to the weather. Okay. And then uh, the other thing we talked about um, was the difference between the two by fours and two by sixes. And we have an exterior wall here, and we have two by six that are framed up in uh, this area yes. here. So. Yep. Uh, what's the difference between that <clears throat> that two by four and two by six, and why do we use a two by six on the exterior wall and two by fours on the interior? Obviously, the two by six is going to be stronger than the two by four when it comes to supporting loads and everything. But you go out west around Vegas and Arizona and stuff. A lot of their houses, the exterior walls are built out of two by four. Big reason for the two by six around our parts is for the insulation value. We can get that much more insulation. So we can get a bigger bat in, in the there. wall. Correct. Okay. Yep. You'll see the interiors get a lot more two by four walls, but anything that's gonna be supporting a, a greater load on the inside of the house, or if it's a plumbing wall, we'll use a two by six. So the difference in that two by four, this is a two by four wall here, so this is just a standard interior wall that doesn't have any bearing to it? Correct, this is basically just there for separation, hold up drywall, whatever, whatever it may be. Okay, and then so this wall, this internal wall is actually a two by six. We yes. had a header across here. Correct. So is there is there bearing that's going on here? Yes, so the floor trusses that are gonna be above this, supporting the second floor, are meant to have this wall there. They need this wall there to support trusses that they need. Okay, so they're gonna sit on top of that, uh, that yes. I guess you'd call that a top plate up there, right? Yep. And it'll be an integrated point load inside the floor truss that's gonna rest right on top of this wall and give us the support that it needs. <laughs> so I noticed one other thing. The plate here, the bottom plate, sill seal, treated uh, plate, these are bolted down. Correct. Why are they bolted down? Well, it was locking the house down to the foundation. It's so it's given without, it rigidity where right. it's not able to uh, to move? Right, without these bolts, the house would be able to move around the foundation. So this is locking it down. There's actual codes as to the spacing of them. There's requirements as to minimum and max spacing from the end of plates that we have to meet where if their bolt isn't there, we're adding bolts to it. Okay, so if the concrete guy doesn't get the bolts Correct. specifically correctly, yes. you actually have to drill down yes. into the concrete and actually add Add Absolutely. bolts to it to plate them down. Yes. Okay. Yep. So Kevin, talk to me a little bit about these massive, God, how big, that thing looks like it's about four inches? Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter Five thick? Five and a quarter wide, 18 inches tall. Now that's going to be a, there, that must be a major bearing point there, there to have that size of uh, structure yeah. there. Anytime, anytime you see an LVL beam up there, there's generally, you're either trying to create a longer span of header without having to have the extra support or you have so this this is a big patio here. door in here then right right yeah okay. so we're supporting a lot this thing is taking care of a lot of load we've got floor above it we've got roof above that 
shingles, snow loads, and everything. So there's going to be a lot of weight on this. But and we out. definitely don't want that to sag at all because then it's going to. Right. It's actually going to impede on the operability of that patio door, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. But when you see your LVL lumber like that too, typically, say a nine and a half LVL versus a nine and a quarter or two by ten. And when you say nine and a quarter versus a two by ten, is that yes. the the, uh, the height, height of it? Okay. The height, yeah. Where this is an eighteen inch, but. Uh, standard and just kind of rule of thumb is your LVL beams are two and a half times stronger than nominal lumber. Okay. So a double nine and a half beam LVL would be two and a half times stronger than a two by ten. So this by 18 10. inch by five and a quarter is extremely yes, that's rigid gonna, piece of that's uh, supporting a lot of a lot of load there. Okay. Yes. And then the other thing that I noticed is that we have these, and I think these are uh, six by six six PSLs, correct? Correct. correct. Yep. Can you tell us what a PSL so is? So the PSL is uh, it's just a it's a it's an engineered wood, so it's meant to support <laughs> loads and wind. Um, and what this is, we've got an LVL beam here, and this is kind of typically it'd be a pretty big beam for this span. Yep. But we've got a it's, we've got a big load on here. We've got a steel beam that's going to go from this wall across to here. So oh, this okay. beam is supporting this portion of the house over here. So it's requiring an extra. Can't just have normal wood like this. Like over here, we have this this right. uh, LVL that we have stud trimmers um, as support. Yes. Over here, we have a smaller LVL, but yet there's so much structure here with the steel that we actually need a PSL Correct. six by six to give that even more strength for Correct. the uh, for the uh, foundation. Even though it's only half the span, it's carrying probably twice the load. Here, Kevin, I noticed that. Actually, on this house, slab on grade, we actually have interior foundation insulation, but we also have an exterior foundation board here. Correct. And I noticed that all of this lines up, the plywood, uh, with the uh, insulation. Yes. Now, what's interesting here is I think you actually had to overhang those plates. We do. And why do we overhang the plates? The, the overhanging the plates allows us to get the sheeting here, where now we can come down with the siding. And get a nice smooth surface here without that. Oh, so, the, so if we held this in with this insulation here, then there'd be some kind of exactly. crazy job. Exactly, have a legend there. there. It just doesn't look funny. So it's a it's a big part of cosmetic and everything that that we do that for. Just one of those end. details that we have to pay attention to. It is because there's a lot of stuff coming together. You know, from the foundation guys, to the foam guys, to then me placing it on top of there, and then the siders following behind me. So there's a lot a lot that comes together to getting this all to line up good and work work nicely as okay. intended. What's this little contraption here? What do you have built uh, built here? You got this thing bolted into right. the uh, into a footing that's sitting out here. Yep. What what's it what's it accomplishing for you? You know, at, at this stage of the house, um, sometimes you just got to use a little redneck ingenuity. Um, <laughs> and this this house with the slab on grade here, we have the in floor heat. So we have tubing running all yep. underneath the concrete and everything. So <laughs> that's preventing us from being able to put any fasteners through the concrete. Typically. This brace would be on the inside of the house and we'd be going down to a board that would just be nailed to a plywood floor. Gotcha. In this case, we can't do that, so we gotta get a little creative. You know, it's funny, because every house that we look at, when we have the uh, first floor being uh, wood, you're right, all these, I think you call, these are bracing, yes. right? Yes, yep. So, until you actually get that floor structure up, Right. Without this bracing, this wall is just right. moving, right? This is, so these braces are keeping everything plumb. They're keeping all the dimensions of the walls where I need them to be. So when I come across and put the floor trusses on, everything is where it needs to be and lining up. Once we get the floor on and we get the floor sheeted above, yep. at that point we can come through and pop these braces up if we need to. Okay, so then that will be structural for to keep, that, keep that all in place. Yes, yep. until this floor gets capped or sheeted above us, these stay on. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of times we'll, we'll keep them on throughout the course of the whole construction of the house, just to give us that much more support. 